far? Who is sleeping? <laughs> okay. So, this table belongs to this owner. Now, notice in the middle, you have system name, correct? Everybody see that system name column? Okay. I want you to pay attention to the line that I'm bringing right at the top. Okay, look at the very first line I have. Do you see a different name in name and system name? Correct? Okay. So, why there is a different name in the first line, but the second line doesn't have that? Nope. They're both objects of the same type. And you will notice the same thing in the third case, but you would not notice it in the fourth case. So it's not like it is doing it on all odd entries. Okay, let's, let's go back to what we learned in the middle half of this class. The names of physical files and logical files, maximum how many characters? 10. Look at that name, suppliers 2017. Start counting the letters. It's more than 10, okay? So, languages like RPG or CL, when they talk to this database guy, they need a table of length, 10. So they will refer to this table by that system name. But the languages like Java and C Sharp who are okay with the length of the table name, they will still refer to the same table by its So, the, the, the name is the one that I created it with. If that name is more than 10 characters long, then the system supplies me with a name which can be used by languages who do not support more than 10 character long names. Okay? So, system names are automatically generated. If they are under 10 or 10, then they are the same as the first column, like logins like OCT activity two. But if the name goes longer, then I got to use that other name, okay? So that's another thing I wanted to bring to your attention. But again, when you go this far, I am pretty sure you won't remember it from a year from now, but at least you would have seen it once. So just a, a repetition may help you. Okay, so everybody is done creating this table. Now, how you enter data in it, you simply right-click on it, and then you click on Edit Contents. Same way, you click on Rows, Insert. Okay, we're going to enter three lecturers with IDs and names. Now, when you enter the first one, you get this warning that the uh, table is not journal. Will you learn about journaling tables in the Advanced Database class? Or maybe in this class, maybe next week, we'll see. Uh, but journaling basically allows the table to store data while the data is being in transition. So whenever you update the data, if you want to refer to the value before change and after change, you can't do that if the table is not journaled. But if the table is journal, then you can look at the value before change and after change. So in the advanced database classes, we deal with triggers. And triggers basically allow you to look at your SQL statement before change and after change. So let's say if I'm moving an employee from department number 10 to department 20, and each department keeps account of the number of employees it has, then what do I need to do? Before change, I say, okay, department 10, Minus, minus, one guy. And department 20 after change gains a guy. So I need to be able to look at the value before change and after change. What was the department of this employee before change? 10. What was What is the department of this guy after change? 20. So if the table is not journaled, I can look at the before and after values. Okay? So... At this point, we're saying, okay, we're okay. It's not journal. That's fine. Okay. Now, we come here in lecturer ID, and we enter the second one. 
And then we enter the third one. 